Hello and welcome in another episode of the video podcast The Art of Refashioning. Today we're going to talk about reworking t-shirts. Yes, and especially those old favorite of yours that you still keep in your wardrobe but you can't wear anymore. something from some of you who wrote me a while back. And the first quote is from Tanya. She's doing quilting for more than 20 years. She's also making bags, totes and other home projects and she's interested in creating from so-called old clothes. So here is what Tanya says. I can't find what I want in stores. The shirts are too short or not flattering to my 40-year-old body. And the ones that I can afford aren't particularly interesting. Also another quote from Dolores, who is second generation seamstress with many years of experience. This is what she says. I need to figure out what to do with the stuff I've collected, as well as motivation. I've collected a bit of everything. I have jeans style coat made out of denim, multiple pair of jeans that are too short and I'd like to lengthen, also men's button-down shirts, skirts, dresses and tanks and tees. What a big list, Dolores! But actually I have almost the same items and I believe most of you who want to rework these old clothes also have. So today we're going to focus on t-shirts. If we haven't met yet, I'm Mariana from Perth, Western Australia. And after working for some time in the bridal and alteration industries, I devoted my time to refashioning, exploring interesting techniques and finding out what really makes unique and beautiful an item of clothing that was old and now it's reworked into new. In the Art of Refashioning show, I'm sharing my findings, experimentations, different techniques that I use, and of course, projects that I've done so far. If you like Dolores and Tanya and would like to tackle these old clothes, head over to the website ecofashionsewing.com and download the clothes upcycling starter kit that I've got for you. So there I share different techniques, examples, and lots more. But also, you can listen to episode 4, or this is about the 7 questions before making the first cut. And if you struggle with motivation in starting out, then just head over to episode 5, where I give you some tips on how to beat procrastination. So today's episode is about t-shirts, reworking them and love them once again. Unfortunately, when we talk about hover time and keeping our clothes, using them as this is the most sustainable and of course reasonable thing to do, unfortunately over time even t-shirts can get not that really flattering if you're over 40 plus like me. First, I'm going to share some tips how you can extend the life of your t-shirts because they're more fragile knitted fabric in comparison to uh, wovens like men's button-up shirts, for example. Also, we're going to talk about what things to consider to help you decide what to do with these old t-shirts. I also prepared some books to share with you so if you want to get deeper and gather more information, you can um, have something to start with. You might ask, why really bother to rework t-shirts that you already have? Now, along with saving some money, I'm pretty sure that one of the reasons that you're interested in refashioning is actually the sustainable part of it. We're surrounded now with so many statistics that show that we're wasting so much valuable material. 
when we talk about t-shirts, the one statistic that I really can't forget is that for one t-shirt, he's wasted 2,700 liters of water to be grown the cotton and to make the t-shirt. So the whole process takes 2,700 liters of water. It's calculated that this is water for a person to drink for three years. Some other reasons are, of course, that you've paid for it, but also that you already spend time to pick it, to decide if you're really going to wear it. So you probably like the color or probably the print or whatever it is on the t-shirt. Well, hopefully this is enough to convince you to go back to your wardrobe and check what you don't wear and how you can rework it. Now, before checking some questions, techniques and other things related to reworking t-shirts, let's see what are the few things that you can do to prolong the life of your t-shirts, no matter if they're just uh, t-shirts you're going to keep wearing as is from your wardrobe or something that you rework. This definitely can make a positive impact onto the sustainability part and help you to make your t-shirts last longer. So the first thing, of course, is go with second hand and then consider just to buy less only what you need or you want to rework. And then when you have it, you can wash it first less often and then when you wash it, wash it in a gentle cycle, also in cold water. Cold water washes clothes really well. And also when it comes to t-shirts, but I do that for all my clothing, gentle cycle really will protect your clothes. The other thing you could do is to wash in washing or laundry bags. These are just finer material that actually you put the clothes there and they are even more protected. I use that not just for t-shirts, but for other delicates as well. And lastly, please line dry if it's possible for your climate. And when you line dry, make sure that your clothes are protected from the sun, especially the summer sun. In Perth, our summer sun is really harsh. So even just few hours under the sun, can impact the color of the clothes. So keep them in shade. So you see, it's just simple things that you could do to prolong the life of your t-shirts and also divert your footprint into more positive direction. Next up, what are some of the questions that can help you to decide what exactly to do with these old t-shirts? redesign a t-shirt. Now, if you already downloaded the clothes upcycling starter kit, you already know my successful formula. And this is use what you have, do what you can and make what you love. <laughs> this should be the guiding motto for redesigning t-shirts as well. Here are some of the questions that you might want to consider. The first one is can you keep it as a whole rather than cutting it up and using just the material? If you remember, these are the two main strategies first to consider in the starter kit. So the first one might just go for something that won't change the look of the t-shirt itself. If you decide that the t-shirt is just too tight with cap sleeves that you don't like anymore, then you might consider some changes to the fit, so to expand it, and some changes or new additions as sleeves, for instance. And the second one is to completely just use the material for something more creative and completely new. When thinking about which way to go, Check also if there is something wrong with the t-shirts. Are there any marks, stains or damages? Are there any tears or rips? Sometimes really, whatever it is on the t-shirt, 
you can incorporate into the design. Talking about marks and stains, here I have an example with a t-shirt refashioned with lace that I did a while ago. So I used a t-shirt which front actually had huge oily stains and I didn't want to do any patches or stitching on top of the stains and create uh, the design in this way. But what I did is actually I used different lace ribbons and created different flowers, uh, like a 3D shaped flowers and made an embellishment. So in this case, because I was adding something more and something 3D that can be catched and pull the fabric, I used Fusible, which is iron-on interfacing on the inside of the t-shirt. So you can check all the details about this project when you follow the link to the website. I'll link to this article. So if you decide to attach something and need Fusible or if you decide to do lace flowers, you can check all the details there. Of course, you could do other things when you're trying to work out marks and stains. It depends, of course, where they are, but you could uh, also do other types of embellishments or do visible stitching like in mending, for example. Also, you could do appliques or reverse appliques and all these kind of things. Some really interesting applique or applique type of techniques are of Alabama Studio. So here I have the book Alabama Studio Sewing Patterns by Natalie Chenin, who is the founder and creative director of Alabama Studio, a company that produces very distinctive artistic clothing. Typically they use new knitted t-shirt material, but you can use old t-shirt fabric as well or some old t-shirts and create something that has very similar look. There are other Alabama Studio books and you can actually go to your closest library and see what they have. Uh, this is advice that I give you in general. Whatever you decide to do, and especially now for t-shirts, there are really good books that you might have in your local library. So. You don't have to buy them, but just go and check there. When you want to keep the t-shirt more or less intact, there are some other techniques that you could consider. And these are bleaching, burning or destructing. So you can see lots of examples on Etsy.com. Just go there and type the keywords and check what you'll find. Now, Etsy is really good platform. But there are others as well, like Pinterest, for example. So if you have some difficulties to find free resources for different refashioning ideas, including t-shirts, then go and listen to episode two on the podcast. There I share my top three free resources for refashioning ideas and how you can go and search there. I'll post link to this episode so you'll be able to find it easy. Going back to distracting techniques, I need to say this. Be careful if you decide to use bleach. First, take all the safety measurements and to protect your lungs, your hands, and also uh, think about the environment where you're going to use it. Furthermore, t-shirt material construction-wise is less durable than woven fabrics, and usually it's cotton. So bleach really quickly destroys these two in combination. So keep that in mind. Moving on to other options. Another way to resurface the material and keep the t-shirt more or less intact is to re-dye it. Especially works for lighter colors, but also if you want to cover marks as well. One very important thing when you decide to re-dye it is to choose the dye uh, relevant to the fiber. So some dyes are designed to work with natural fibers, but other dyes are designed to work on synthetic fibers like polyester, for example. So make sure that you know the fiber of the material first. Then think about, do you want to just deep dye it and that's it? or you want to do something additional and make some pattern 
for example. I have some example here of a t-shirt that I successfully dyed with shibori technique. Shibori is where you stitch the cloth and then dye the material. Again, there are different books that you can find. The best is to go to your library and see if they have something on shibori. There are plenty of books and you will have plenty of stitches and uh, things to choose from for your project if you decide to go this way. The project that I've done a while ago is a t-shirt. So I stitched it uh, with different patterns at the front to make flowers. At the back I did spider web type of stitching and on the sleeves and the neckline I did like small circles. Okay, what about dough if you're sewing beginner or you don't have that much time on such a complicated designs or you don't like embellishment? Then I have another example for you. And this is a t-shirt that goes along with the pants that I did from two main shirts. You probably already know about this design as I mentioned it in a few other episodes. So this t-shirt and pants were creating an outfit that was part of the slow clothing project that Jane Milburn created in 2016. Amazing project where Jane Milburn gathered over 40 Australian makers and promoted the slow clothing philosophy. So you can check that in the link of the show notes or description of the video. But her website is Textile Beat, so go over there and check more about the slow clothing project she did. Going back to my project and what I did with the t-shirt is actually I simply embellished the neckline by adding some leftover pieces from the main the men's shirt. Furthermore, I added to the sleeves. I created sleeve extensions by using leftovers from the two men's shirts I used for the pant. You can check more details on this project by following the link in the show notes or the description. If you like to extend the sleeves, then go and look further the t-shirt refashion with lace that I mentioned. There I used wide lace material to extend the sleeves. Now here I want to mention also two books that can give you some inspiration and additional ideas on how to rework t-shirts. The first book is Generation T, 108 Ways to Transform a T-shirt by Megan Nikolai. The second is T-shirt Makeovers, 20 Transformations for Fabulous Fashions by Sistash of Harlem. Carmia Marshall and Carmen Weber. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing some of the names. Although these books have more youthful fashion, let's say, and the projects are with bare shoulders, halter necks or bare backs and uh, short skirts, it's actually really worth going in your local library in checking if they have these books or some other books because when you see these kind of books, first, they're really great inspiration. You're going to be inspired by the projects you see there and develop and adjust for your own project. But also in such books, you will find interesting techniques that you might want to incorporate in your design idea. Let's quickly see some examples of more creative ideas. Here I'm gonna show you three projects. So the first one is upsizing of small, rich blue color t-shirt. To upsize the t-shirt, I used rich lime green color and cut out triangular shapes or godets to the sides. I added ruffle on the hem to finish the look of the tunic. And I used material that had actually these two colors, similar blue and the lime green color. And finally, pushing my boundaries to mixing colors and working with different print materials. I created new sleeves by using light woven material, which is like white base with uh, some flowers and leaves that actually have similar blue and green colors. And finally, because I really wanted to enrich the design, I used some leftover material to create flowers as an embellishment. I also added t-shirt yarn, 
to add more to the embellishment and some ruffles and different uh, pieces just to finish off the look. So in this case, I redesigned by using cool colors, but also by adding different prints and mixing and matching all the materials together. The other project that I want to show you was created for Wafta Challenge. Wafta stands for Western Australia Fibre and Textile Association. For the challenge, we were giving old vintage type of bras to create something with it. And of course, I did a refashion. So because the bra didn't have any stretch, I couldn't use it as much for the bust area and I decided to use just the straps. And this was the base for my refashion. I used the upper part of the bra and I wanted to create this type of tunic. And then I took very stretchy viscose t-shirt with open neckline and turned it upside down. Where the opening of the neckline was, I inserted a piece of material that was like a very light lime yellow green piece of uh, woven fabric. To make it functional and easy to wear, at the back I did shearing with elastic thread and then embellished with lacy type of flute sleeves which I attached to the brass straps. This project needed a little bit of thinking and I didn't start with the whole vision. I added step by step the whole design, first deciding how to attach the t-shirt to the bra, how to make it adjustable at the back and then adding the material at the front and finally gathering and sewing the sleeves. The last example is a refashion that I did recently and I'll do a separate video on this. Essentially use the technique one new from two old. If you don't know exactly what I'm talking about, go and watch or listen the episode 12 of the show, where I explain how you can take two old garments and create new one. In this project, I used a very favorite old t-shirt of mine and combined it with another top. The colors really helped me to combine these two. The black t-shirt with a white silvery saying with the red heart in the middle, and the second top again on black base, but with more colors like red, pink, yellow and green. So first the matching colors, then combining two different textures like t-shirt material and lacy material. And finally, the great addition to this refashion were the original features of the second top. So the second top had all these gathers on the sleeves and gathers around the waist, plus the black lace and everything was already sewn. I just needed to combine the two and add the sleeves and neckline. To wrap up this episode, I want to give you another couple of books that are really good for the essentials and the fundamentals to work with knitted fabrics. So the first book is the book Sewing with Knitted Fabrics by Wendy Ward. So it's actually a book with patterns, but the first pages are full with information about the different fabrics, the sewing techniques, uh, and any other information you may need on knitted fabrics. The book is also valuable because it gives you garments with flattering shapes and if you have some knitted fabric around, you might decide to go this way and make some garments from scratch. Another book is Tilly and the Buttons Stretch. So this book is by Tilly Wellness and has also projects to make from scratch using the patterns, but it also has some really valuable information on how to work with stretch and knitted fabrics. So you can check the library or you can go to the website and purchase it if you decide to use it or you like some of the patterns and want to make them. And lastly, I want to mention, don't ignore vintage books because vintage books are full with so much valuable information. Everything that you will find in a good book can be found in vintage good book. 
So if you have some friends or you're into some sewing groups or craft groups, you might find something on working with t-shirt or in general knitted and stretch fabrics. So here I have the book Space Age Sewing with Knit and Stretch Fabrics by Beverly Sharp. It's actually two parts, so two books. The first one covers knitted jersey and other knitted um, materials. And the second one covers sewing lingerie and swimwear. So as I mentioned, don't ignore them. Despite that vintage books might have an outdated look in general, they actually have lots of detailed information usually. So keep mind on those as well. Well, hopefully today's episode inspired you to look to your wardrobe in a different way and use some of these old favorite t-shirts of yours. I'm Mariana from Perth, Western Australia. Thank you for your lovely company today. See you next time. Bye for now.